Hi everyone and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Dr. Sid Cowley and I work at the intersection of fusion and artificial intelligence at FIA member DigiLab. Today is Wednesday the 6th of August and I'm here to give you your Fusion News Roundup. Stories today include 1. Helion Energy starts construction on nuclear fusion plant to power Microsoft data centers. 2. Germany advances plans for world's first fusion plant in high-tech agenda. 3. Avalanche Energy hits key milestone on the road to a desktop fusion reactor. And of course, I'll have some bonuses at the end. 1. Helion Energy starts construction on nuclear fusion plant to power Microsoft data centers. Our first story today has been all over the news, including Reuters, Yahoo Finance, and World Nuclear News. It covers the announcement that FIA member Helion Energy has started the construction for their planned fusion pilot plant, codenamed Orion. The site is located in Malaga, Washington, and was chosen to take advantage of grid infrastructure in place for the nearby Rock Island Dam hydroelectric plant. But what's more, this will allow Helion to connect to Washington's primary power delivery networks and sell power directly to Microsoft data centers. For those who have been listening for a while, you may remember from 2023 that Microsoft initiated a purchase power agreement with Helion agreeing to buy electricity. Now, it's always exciting to see fusion organizations breaking ground and building new facilities. But it's also important to take a step back and put this story into a bit of context. Orion will be Helion's eighth device, building off of research from their recently completed seventh generation Polaris device. However, the company has not yet achieved a net gain fusion plasma, and their approach, the Field Reverse Configuration, or FRC, is still one of the least well-researched approaches in fusion. So with that said, selling electricity by 2028 to Microsoft is an incredibly aggressive timeline for Helion. And though everyone in the industry really hopes they make good progress, it's important to understand that these really aggressive timescales also come with risk. Two, Germany plans for world's first fusion power plant in high-tech agenda. Our second story today covers the announcement that the German cabinet has agreed upon and published their latest high-tech agenda. This agenda highlights key deep tech areas that the government wants to focus on strategically, including artificial intelligence, no surprise there, quantum technologies, microelectronics, biotechnology, climate neutral energy production, and most importantly, Fusion. Now, not only is it so exciting to see fusion so front and center in the German government's technology strategy, but the agenda comes with more concrete actions to enact that strategy. For example, the agenda states, we intend to establish a hub for networking activities on magnetic and laser fusion to set up and expand research infrastructures and technology demonstrators for a fusion power plant. Following this agenda, the government plans to release a fusion action plan later this year and a fusion energy research and innovation roadmap in 2026. So it's great that the government's not just talking about it, they're putting in real concrete plans on delivery. Three, Avalanche Energy hits key milestone on the road to a desktop fusion reactor. Our final story today comes from TechCrunch and covers some recent progress from FIA member Avalanche Energy. Now, before I dive into the story, I'd just like to address the headline, which is a bit sensational, implying that a desktop fusion reactor may be just around the corner. To be clear, we will not be seeing a desktop like Mr. Fusion delivering electricity to your toaster anytime soon. Now, having said that, there's still some cool progress in this story about a compact fusion device. Specifically, Avalanche Energy's approach is a very unique Orbitron approach, where plasma particles orbit an electrode, generating a strong electric field. Now, this electric field is one of the most difficult parts of the concept's development, as you need very, very high voltages to generate that. Recently, however, Avalanche announced it reached a milestone of 300 kilovolts in a steady state device progressing the feasibility of high-performance plasmas in this Orbitron concept. If Avalanche Energy could achieve good performance through these high voltages with a small device, this could be a promising way to do things like generate a small, compact neutron source for different applications. According to Robin Langtree, CEO of Avalanche Energy, 
Our 300 kilovolt breakthrough lays the groundwork for delivering high flux neutrons at a low cost to a wide range of customers who lack reliable, scalable neutron sources necessary for their operations. In fact, from sales of radioisotopes from these neutrons and rentals of some of their test facilities, Avalanche thinks it could be profitable as early as 2028. So though this idea of a desktop electricity generating fusion plant is very far off, Avalanche is still making excellent progress towards a compact fusion device that can be used in applications that require neutrons. Right, well that's all for our main story today, but of course we have a few bonuses. For our first bonus story today, we have the fact that our annual FIA industry report has been featured in quite a few news outlets over the past few weeks, from Reuters to Bloomberg. A lot of headlines have focused on one of the key findings of the report related to funding. Specifically, this last year had 2.5 billion US dollars in new investment into the private industry, marking the most investment in a single year since 2022. Overall, this means private fusion investment is now almost at 10 billion US dollars worldwide. For our second bonus story today, we have an overview of the brilliantly named Best Tokamak located in China. It's one of the most quickly developed fusion projects to date and aims to generate a burning fusion plasma in only a couple of years. This is definitely one to keep your eye on. Right, well, that's all for Fusion News this week. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. And as always, your continued support means the world to us. So continue to follow and comment and subscribe. That's all for me this week. See you in the next episode.